I'm just gonna take a moment, a little breather. That was a lot of information. Is that heavy? Anybody? A lot of numbers. I, I heard someone in the back said, I got lost. All right, that was you? All right. So my goal, my goal is to be a little bit lighter, but as you leave this room, be able to really identify where you're at today and where you want to go, right? To be able to absorb the information in this room, say, all right, did I get value from this room? Did I enjoy the speakers? Did I identify one or two of the opportunities that have been presented today? And how can I move forward in my life, whether I want to team up with the people in this room or take the knowledge and maybe go somewhere else, right? We don't want to put that that heavy pressure on you that you have to work with us. We want to be very, very transparent. We want to work with people that want to work with us, that love to work with us. We want to create an environment that is super healthy, super transparent, that you feel comfortable telling everybody about what it is that you do, what you're about, and be very, very fulfilled in this life. Because I think it's beyond the money. And I know what it is to make no money, a little bit of money, and I've been in a very, very, very blessed position for the last five years to know what it is to make a lot of money. For a young individual like myself, 27 years old, very, very blessed. I represent the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Okay, I got no shame in the game. I love my father in heaven. He's given me all the opportunities that I have today, especially putting other kingdom-like men and women in my life, Dapo being one of them, Carlos being another one of them, right? And we're gonna dive into this real quick. I take a look at why is it extremely important for you to know your numbers? Why is it so important? Everyone in here knows how tall they are, right? You know how tall you are, that's a number. You know how old you are, that's a number. Most of us know how much we weigh, roughly, right? We know how many times we need to brush our teeth and how many times we need to go to the bathroom and uh, take a shower, how many times we need to eat a day. There's just numbers all around our life. Yet the most important numbers that you interact with every single day, over 65% of Americans, and I think that number is actually completely false. I think it's much higher than that. I would argue to say at least 85 to 90%, even including people who make a lot of money. There's people that, I know people that make a lot of money. I have clients that make seven figures, multiple seven figures, and they don't know where their money is going. It, that's, that, it's wild to me that we interact with numbers our whole entire life since the very, maybe when you were 15, depending on what state you're in, 14, 15, 16 years old, from that very moment you get your first paycheck, first job, leading all through your working 40, 50 years working to retirement, and we still don't know our numbers. I mean, not even remotely accurate. I can't tell you how many 50-year-olds I talk to, 60-year-olds I talk to, that just, they come to me, they're like, Denzel, help me out. Blank, I have no idea where their numbers are going. So there's four major numbers in your life that you need to know right it's not necessarily your weight or your height okay it says it on your driver's license mm -hmm. you're right you can be okay all right these are your monthly net income after taxes what are you taking home right there's most of us in this room have jobs or careers right any of us in here are working right now jobs careers raise your hand all right cool and then the rest are entrepreneurs i'm assuming or self-employed so to some degree, you're generating some type of income, right? And then there's a point in your life, or there's points in all of our lives I've experienced, everyone has experienced here, you either get fired or you lose your job or you transition and then there's no income. That's a number you do know. <laughs> Everybody knows how much money you make when you're not making anything, all right? That's pretty easy. But what about when you actually are generating, how do you operate? How do you split up these numbers, right? So income, is your top line rough monthly revenue that you're generating, whether it's from a job, career, hourly, part-time, commission, business, even dividends, stocks, whatever it may be, income. Next is your expenses, okay? This is, now, this is my personal opinion. 
anything and everything that leaves your checking account is an expense. So that is including your tithes and offerings, right? What you give to God, that's an expense to the kingdom, okay? How much you save, that's an expense to yourself, but it's still leaving your economy for a temporary period of time. It's leaving that day-to-day -day environment. Saving, and then there's investing. That's also money that leaves your economy for a period of time, right? There's debt. How many of us in here have debt? Probably everybody has debt, okay? Like if you are debt-free, raise your hand. Completely debt-free, beautiful, right? Beautiful. But that is rare. Not too many people are completely debt-free. And even when you do become debt-free, maybe there's a period of time where you go back into debt, maybe to acquire a car, an asset, a mortgage. Debt is a part of your life, right? It is a part of us. Most of us in the church are told to avoid this like the plague, right? If you, if you have debt, you're a, uh, a slave to the lender, all these different things that we hear about it. Whereas if you keep reading the word, what's interesting about it is it, there's many scriptures that talks to us about how to leverage and how to multiply our resources, right? Genesis 1.26 is a prime example of that where it breaks down the model of be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Multiply means to multiply your productivity. How do you do that without leverage? How do I multiply myself in the 21st century today? Well, here's a prime example. Got this microphone right here. Shout out to my brother in Christ and confidant, Joshua, who is recording and taking photos. When that video, by the time this session is done, that video is gonna get uploaded to social media channels. And now I'm gonna have a digital version of Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez working for me 24 seven, day and night, while I'm sleeping, while I'm hanging out with my wonderful fiance, who will be my wife soon. So shout out to her, shout out to her, yeah. It's not, every, it's not every day I get to speak in front of her, so I've got the butterflies. So every time I look to my left, all I see is beauty. Not that y'all not beautiful over here. Y'all are very beautiful. But those of you who are married, raise your hand, or are in a committed relationship, raise your hand. Uh, and for those of you who are married, I don't know what it is, but I know I'm convicted. That woman right there is the most beautiful woman in my life, wow. in the world. And I know that's the same for the gentlemen in here who are also mad. Like, there's, there's beauty everywhere, but, but once you get convicted about another person in your life, beauty, right? Imagine that same conviction transferring right here. <sighs> it is a recipe, my friend, for dominion, to dominate your life, not other people's lives, your life, dominate, right? So Velocity Banking was touched on, might have been mentioned during the presentation when Carlos was, was talking. He mentioned it very, very lightly, very, very quickly. I am the guy, that's my position, I'm claiming that, that's my authority. I'm the guy on YouTube that discusses this strategy right here, Velocity Banking, right? Now, I put a definition which is the ability to leverage OPM, other people's money. We've heard that mentioned before by Carlos and Dapo. It's the ability to leverage other people's money via a line of credit, credit cards, personal line of credit, business line of credit, or home equity line of credit. These are all products that you can find at select banks. Not every bank is going to have all of these options, right? So on my YouTube channel, there is a plethora of content that goes over that, right? But essentially, these are banking products to rapidly pay off debt by canceling interest, right? You can avoid interest when you go to college and you get student loans and it says deferred interest, right? But you still gonna pay that interest. <laughs> Just like when you get a credit card, it says 0% for X amount of time. And if you don't read the fine print, it says deferred interest. Or when you get braces when you were younger and your parents, they signed up for, what's it called? Care credit? Everybody know what care credit is, right? Everybody's experienced that at least once or twice. 
and had some dental work done in, on, your, on your teeth or for your children or for your spouse, and you sign up for care credit and says six months, zero interest, low payment, blah, 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 but you forgot the, the, the fine print, it said deferred interest. My mom got caught up in it, ended up paying an extra $1,500 on dental work that she could have avoided had she understood these strategies, right? So, the ability to cancel interest on your debts faster than the traditional ways of paying off debt using your own discretionary income, AKA cash flow. So back to those four major numbers, I got what I generate, I need to know this, back of my hand, I need to know these numbers. I need to know my expenses. Like I know, like I know my body, like I wake up in the morning, like I know the outfits I'm gonna wear, the people I'm gonna hang out with, that's how you need to know these numbers. Very, very clear. Your debt, and then you're left with this beautiful number right here, which is called cash flow. I believe this is one of the most successful ways, probably the successful way to multiply and replenish wealth on planet Earth, is you need to have this. You need to have money left over. Have to. Can't operate without it, right? I'm amazed. I grew up with a, a uh, mother that defied what I'm telling you right now, where she literally lived paycheck to paycheck, sometimes negative, multiple negative months, and just had the ability to stretch dollars over and over and over again. And I got to a point where I'm like, you get so convicted, and you're like, I'm not going to operate this way anymore. Does anyone, has anyone gotten to that point in their life financially where you're like, I am done living paycheck to paycheck. I've had enough. I can't operate this way. It cannot be this way any longer, right? Cash flow is the way to go, right? So velocity banking, here's a more simplified definition. It's essentially borrowing from Peter to pay Paul where Peter charges me zero interest to pay Paul back who was charging me interest, AKA student loans, AKA your mortgage, AKA credit card debt, AKA your car loan, AKA dental debt, IRS, taxes, all of that. That's Paul. Peter is the opportunity to be able to leverage OPM at zero cost or offset or very, very, very low interest compared to what you were paying. So this is a recapturing, canceling, right? Hence, paying off debt faster when all money is going to principal. The, the more cash flow I have, the more money I have going to principal, the faster I'm going to eliminate debt in my life, the more cash flow I'm going to have, the more clarity I'm going to have, the more convicted I'm going to be that that is the most beautiful woman in my life, <laughs> just like other things in your life that you're just going to get totally convicted on, the more clear you are about your numbers. So here are some rules and we'll fly through this again. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information. There's literally like six or eight slides on here. So I'm going to go quick, right? I want to give you the, the rules, the foundations of understanding your money and also understanding leverage. A lot of what we do at Your Lifestyle Bank is about leverage, right? Leveraging OPM, leveraging OPT, other people's time, leveraging OPS, other people's stages, right? OPA, other people's audiences, okay? Leverage, 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 the fastest way. And yet we are taught in conventional financial industries on the TV that you need to own everything that you buy, you need to buy everything cash, right? You need to suck it up, uh, eat the ramen noodles and just go on a rice and bean diet <laughs> and hope and pray for the best. Where I'm like, wait a minute. When I'm looking at these rich folks and they're leveraging literally people, resources, other people's audiences, other people's stages, I leverage YouTube, YouTube pays me thousands of dollars every single year. I leverage Instagram, people DM me. I leverage Facebook, I leverage LinkedIn, I leverage everyone. I leverage my fiance, because of how beautiful she is, <laughs> and many other skills that she has. She just became a lawyer, shout out to her on that. You know? yeah. I leverage my brother in Christ here, video, photography, his knowledge, his wisdom. I leverage Dapo. I leverage Carlos. Anyone I interact, I'm looking to leverage. I'm looking to extract the best out of you so that I can have a little piece of that, so that I can enhance my life, and then I'm gonna give what I have to you, I'm gonna pour into you so that you can be a blessing. Your blessing 
can then bless me. That's going to motivate me to bless you. That is kingdom protocol, my friend. Anytime a king vis visits another king, that king got to bring a gift. That's protocol, right? By the time this king leaves that king's domain, guess what? This king got to give him a gift more valuable than the gift he came with so that his reputation will travel to his domain, to his kingdom, and then his reputation stayed in this domain, which then motivates that king to say, dang, I, I came in with this much, he, he now left me with this much to exit, I gotta tell everybody about this king. And the next time I visit, I'm bringing even more, right? Protocol. So again, rules, understand your, what your cash flow is times 12. Thank you, Carlos. Understand that debt snowball is your measuring stick to, because leverage comes with risk. Debt snowball is your measuring stick, which is simply the amount of money that I have left over, I'm applying that towards debt, I get a measurement, how long that's gonna take me. Our calculators will show you how to do that, save you time. Rule number three, credit cards can be used to pay bills, receive cashback rewards, to offset borrowing costs. Pretty unique, that's a way to offset costs. Rule number four, do not leverage more than 66% of your capital. It's healthy to have reserves. Can't tell you how many people I talk to that over leverage and then they want me to do magic for them, right? Don't over leverage yourself, okay? And that's with anything, with opportunities. If you, if you have 20 opportunities that come across you, not every opportunity is gonna be for you. Eventually you wanna narrow it down. You wanna focus, right? Rule number five, know your numbers. Solve for cash flow, okay? To determine how much we're gonna leverage, we call that a chunk, right? Simplifying terms here, simplifying terms. To determine your chunk, we're taking cash flow times 12, 66% of your tool that you're gonna be using, and that determines our chunk amount that we're gonna leverage towards eliminating debt in your life or creating cash flow and income. It can go both ways. Here's how you calculate costs. Again, we will have calculators that will do this for me. I'm a big fan of running simple math that you can operate with, right? So that you can prove to yourself, you know what? I don't have to be a math genius. I don't have to be a mathematician to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And even then, if you don't know how to do that, we got this helpful tool. I'll do it just for you, all right? No issue. So, to calculate your borrowing cost, you're gonna times it by the interest rate of whatever you owe, the balance, and you're dividing it by 365 days. That chunk that we determined, let's just say it's 10 grand, that's your balance, times it by whatever the rate is that you got from the bank, divide by 365, that's your daily rate, right? Now, that $10,000 chunk, the way I offset interest is quite amazing. Just like you have a checking account where all your income goes into, your new line of credit can act and operate like a checking account, right? Which means that when I d deposit my income, instead of it landing in a checking, it's gonna start to land in my lifestyle bank account. That could be a life insurance policy or it can be any one of those banking products that, that I mentioned, right? Which means that I owe 10,000 for one day, I dump my paycheck in, I now owe 8,500. I'm no longer getting charged that interest rate on the 10. I'm now getting charged interest on 8,500, right? Which means 100% of my money that goes into my line is principal every single time. So I leverage money, I pay something off that was costing me more interest. I now redirect that payment to my line and not just my excess cash flow, but all of my income. So what happens is gonna be, there's gonna be three distinct numbers throughout a month. The highest balance, right? The, there's gonna be the lowest balance, and then there's going to be a middle number, right? So I borrow 10,000, I make 5,000 a month, maybe split up weekly, whatever the case may be, or bi-weekly, right? Money came out, paid something off. I got cash flow, income in. Now what? We gotta pay bills, right? How do I pay my bills if all my money just went into the line? We still got that checking account, so we just transfer what we need, when we need it, 
back to that checking account. Meanwhile, the rest of my income is manipulating the interest, right? And so those three numbers that we would get, you're doing that same rule each and every time. Then we're gonna add those three numbers of our daily borrowing costs, add the three, divide by three, you'll get a net estimated, it's actually overestimated monthly costs. And you would compare that number to how much interest you just saved off of that car loan, that student loan, that credit card, and portion of your mortgage because you'd be hitting it in chunks.